Uh, let's first go to the um, Fox News uh, Bernie Town Hall. Uh, play a couple of clips from there. This is um, it's clip number three, where we had mentioned earlier that Brett Baer had to sort of maintain some semblance of being the straight news guy. And so uh, I am not going to feel quite as humiliated when I take a survey of the audience and find that everything I've been promoting on Fox News for over a decade is not popular with the people who are here for some reason. Um, now, this was done. This town hall was in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Um, I don't I, I mean. If you had told me that this was done at uh, the auditorium at the University of Vermont and uh, that I would have been like, oh, that makes sense. But this audience, I don't know if Fox News doesn't have a lot of attention, but th this audience seemed to be incredibly amenable to uh, Bernie Sanders and his policies, which theoretically have been maligned on Fox News for ages. And here, Martha McCallum, and I think this is getting towards the end of the, um, of the thing where there's, I, th I think these two hosts are got to feel like we have in some way failed because we're not getting that moment or the series of moments where we have exposed Bernie Sanders uh, for either having policies that don't make sense or having policies that are not popular with this broad section of people. And and so I think there's a lot of frustration involved in this. And you can see Martha McCallum and uh, he just play this exchange. About Vermont, because Vermont tried to have a single payer program. And in 2014, the Democratic governor abandoned it because he had to raise income taxes, had to raise uh, payroll taxes. And the people of Vermont didn't want their taxes no, to go up. No, it's not quite true. And, that's, and, it, and they abandoned no, the program. You, so if well, you're getting in Vermont, into internal Vermont politics, of which I know a little bit. Well, I'm sure so you I do. I don't want to be <laughs> so it, All right, The governor did a rather poor job. But I think if you look at polling, especially among Democrats, as I'm sure you have, you tell me strong majority of Democrats and more than a few Republicans want to see a Medicare for all program. What the opponents, let's be clear about this, Martha. When you are dealing with an healthcare, which is, what's it, 18% of our GDP? I mean, we're talking about three and a half trillion dollars a year. And you have insurance companies that make billions and billions of dollars in profit. Let me give you an example, if I might, of the dysfunctionality of the current healthcare system. Recently, um, Aetna merged with CVS, you may recall that, big merger, which in my view will drive health care costs up. The gentleman who was head of uh, Aetna, a name Mr. Bertolini, you know what he got for putting together that merger? He got a $500 million bonus. Do you think that's how we should spend health care no, dollars? I mean, I think everybody is in agreement that health care needs to be fixed in this country. The question is how. And my question to you was it, it will drive up taxes to pay for health care. And not just the wealthy will pay for that. The middle class good. will also okay. pay for it. Very good. So how do you justify it? And All right, Martha, what are you not including in your discussion? You tell me. I will tell you. You're not going to pay any health insurance premiums. <laughs> But look, I'm Martha, say one way or the other. Martha, whether it's in your income oh, tax or your payroll tax, you're right. Pay. Look, healthcare is not free. You never heard me suggest that we're going to match. You just said it was going to be free for everyone. It's going to be free at the point of when you use it. Okay. And you go to. Why are you so shocked by this? Because this someone's going to pay. Goes, somebody is going <laughs> to pay. Who are they? Who okay. Pays? Okay. One minute. One second. Okay. Relax. I'm just we'll be talking. Please. We'll get through this it's together. It's a common question. <laughs> we had. Okay. All we right. had Here so we many email questions. Okay. Sanders, how he is Fair enough. I got it. It's a fair But question. the first thing, let's just say <laughs> hypothetically. Okay. You're, uh, you are um, self-employed, and you have you've got a husband and two kids, okay? Family of four. Do you know how much that family is paying today for health care? How many? $28,000 a year. Okay. All right, we're spending $11,000 per person. We are saying to that family of four, you ain't going to pay that $28,000. you are not paying any more premiums. You're not paying any more co-payments. You're not paying any more deductibles. How's that? 28,000 you're not paying. But does that mean you're not gonna pay something? Of course it does. 
you're going to pay more in taxes. And do members of Congress who now have gold-plated health Pause it for one second. Now, now, this is really sort of fascinating, right? Because, like, that is... That you can almost see Martha, like, looking, like, a little bit flush there, right? Like, she's like... She doesn't have anything else to say. He's just conceded what she thinks is the sort of like the 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 you know the the stake through the heart of this program where he says, "Yeah, no, of course. You're going to pay more in taxes. You're going to pay less for premiums." Mm-hmm. That is the easy calculation here and there has been a, and the thing is is that there is no there has been no one who has been able to produce a report there's been no research there's been no estimates even the the mercatus study from uh the right-wing think tank there has been nothing released by anyone who can who can refute that central dynamic and the thing that bernie is doing that is different from when they talked about where in vermont it failed was a governor shulman i think it was his name the, the thing that Bernie is doing, and, and we used to get calls from John from San Antonio would call in all the time about this very point, is that you must lead with the idea that taxes are going to be raised because taxes are going to be raised. And Bernie makes the point. It is free at the point of service and it is free when you pay for it. But you're but it's not free. You're going to have to pay for it. It's going to be in taxes and Middle class people as well as wealthy people are going to pay more in taxes, but the net expenditures are going to be less because you're not going to be paying for premiums and for basically the profits and the inefficiencies in the private insurance market. And then, you know, it doesn't even bring up the fact that like, and then the other good news is you're not going to have to deal with a tremendous hassle. Like I, like I have like spreadsheets I have uh, Google Drives with that I take pictures of, like, you know, Saul's eye therapy, and I take the pictures, and I upload them, and then I see if, the you know, my insurance is going to pay for them, and I got decent insurance. All right, good. But does that mean you're not going to pay something? Of course it does. You're going to pay more in taxes. And do members of Congress who now have gold-plated health insurance... No, we don't. Well, they have a special plan that's outside Obamacare. Uh, a different plan. You know, do member of, members of Congress. Pause it for one second. You know who has a plan that's outside of Obamacare? Right there. Most people. Yeah, almost everybody. Yeah. <laughs> the only people, it's 10 million people in this country who have a plan inside of Obamacare. And you have something like 270, 280 million people covered by uh, insurance in this by country. By the way, unless you want to define Obamacare as Patient Protection Act, in which case everybody's covered by it and everybody loves it. Well, like, oh, well you can't Congress discriminate against me has a different having... health care right. thing, just like Brett Baer has. No, 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 no I understand one. that. But, I'm just saying if he's using it, and it, it, of course, we know that in terms of actual plans, but the patient protection component of it is national and protects a lot of people. Yeah, yeah like he's talking about the exchanges conditions. here. I think. Yeah, he's right. talk, I think that's but what he's trying to talk Obamacare about. But right. Obamacare has more than that, just the exchanges. Right, well, it's Medicaid too, but I th- the, the real question is like, why is Brett Baer bringing this up now? Because like Bernie has now destroyed McCain Callum's one critique and so he's pivoting to we can't really trust congress people because you guys get you're 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 out of this whole system you're going to try and be out of this whole system that's where he's going with this go back a little bit and you'll see this is this is the they have now gone from the alamo to like the next redoubt right like where it's like okay we're going to go to the farthest reaches of the alamo because we're we, we need uh we need to figure out some way of undercutting this and it's the classic well we can't trust government and because politicians all lie it does you're going to pay more in taxes and do members of congress who now have gold-plated health insurance no we don't well they have a special plan that's outside obamacare uh a different plan. You know, do member of, members of Congress, are they going to do that transition as Damn well? Damn right. Of course. Of course. Well, Whoops. Uh, but I, I want to make the point. Bummer. I want to get back to Pause the point. Now, this, is, this is where Brett Baer, if he's really on his game, or McCallum, if she was really on her game, she's going to go, well, because this is the last, the last refuge is how many pages is it? Because that, that was the way that it went with, uh, with Obamacare. 
right? There was a problem with the program. And then it was like, well, <laughs> but congressmen aren't going to put themselves in it. And then it was, and it was over 100 pages. Like, literally, this was a talking point at the time. I, in that Glenn Beck uh, rally I went to, one of the common complaints about Obamacare was nobody knows what's in it. And they passed it. It's over 100 pages. There shouldn't be anything. Everybody's the same. Four pages. That should be the top. This will them. probably be a shorter bill. Yeah, yeah exactly. A shorter yeah, bill. come at me, bro. Of course. Of course. Why would you suggest otherwise? But I, I want to make the point. I want to get back to the point that the Martha raised. Look, health care costs money. Every other country, or virtually every country, does it in the same way we do education for our kids. Okay, when a kid walks into school, kid doesn't have to take out a credit card, right? It's paid for out of public funds. That's what most countries do. So if you're asking me, if your question is a fair question, are people going to pay more in taxes? Yes. But at the end of the day, the overwhelming majority of people are going to end up paying less for health care because they're not paying premiums, co-payments, and deductibles. We're going to get it. Yeah, there we go. Well, we're going to take oh, a break. Look at, look, at the, look at the face. Look yeah. at that. Look at that. I think I handled that pretty well. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, smooth Bernard. Call at me. again. You know, that's the great. Inc- what I love about Bernie is like some people contrasted spin with complexity, right? Like, oh, well, if you're speaking in spin and sound bites, then you're not acknowledging how complicated these issues are. He's great because it's like it actually is super simple and he has great message discipline, but it's also clear and honest and direct. But the the, the key is what um, John from San Antonio would call in years ago to complain about. So I said was clear and honest. Leading with the taxes. Yes. And that was there was an attempt by, I think, Democrats for a long time. And part of it was, you know, back in the day, like Walter Mondale and whatnot uh, was. If you say you're going to raise taxes, the American public is necessarily going to have a problem with it. As if there is no argument, as if the American public cannot understand the concept that right now you're paying $10 for something. And if you we're going to eliminate that $10 expense, but it will cost you $6. And didn't also Mondale, if I... It, didn't he like sort of basically say like we're going to just impl- taxes as austerity to pay off the deficit or something? If I know if I've heard that correctly, it was not presented as it was something like we need to pay for things. Yeah, and, it wasn't yeah. like presented as part of a ambitious no, agenda to there take was care no of end, things for people. There was no agenda as far as I can tell. And that for was, what it's worth, you think of Obama. They they soft pedaled Obamacare costing something. And I'm be much more pissed about having a having my premiums jacked up than having my taxes jacked. Oh yeah, or you know, getting a kind of not that good silver plan and finding out it still costs a hundred dollars if I need to go to the doctor for a sick visit, which is the thing that happened to me. Um, yes, and so uh, this was by leading with that taxes. It makes it also makes his job, frankly, easier. Because other people have to try and hide the ball, and he's not trying to hide the ball. He's trying to say, like, look at the ball. It's a good ball.